And one of the reasons why Franklin County is such a great place to live is Franklin County Parks and Recreation. And that's kind of uh, going to be our crux of what we're talking about this morning, about some of the successes that they've had uh, over the last uh, couple of months and year, and also looking forward to the busy season that they're right in the middle of but it's just going to get busier as we head throughout the spring. So we said we've got a special guest here. We've got a presentation that we're going to be uh, showing you as well this morning to kind of give you something to look at while we talk. Uh, but if you would introduce yourself and your role with Parks and Rec. Yeah, thanks so much, Kevin. My name is uh, Paul Chapman. I'm the director for Frank County Parks and Recreation. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And Paul, how long have you been with Parks and Rec? It, it feels like just yesterday, but... Yeah, do you know, actually, it's probably been, um, I guess, right at six years wow. now. Absolutely. Yeah, so and, and it's been Parks good. And Parks and Rec has saw a lot of changes uh, for the better. Uh, yeah. Can you talk about the number of programs uh, that you guys take care of or, or offer throughout the year. It's too many to count. It, it literally is oh, too yeah. many to count. Well, yeah, we have a great number of, of programs. And you're right, yeah, it's, um, over the last few years, we've been able to add on a number of neat new activities and programs and new offerings. And, and here, in, actually, in a little bit, I'll be able to kind of highlight some of those. I got some, yeah, some pretty impressive numbers to share with you guys about Absolutely. some things we've done. We had some great staff from Parks and Recreation that. Um, do some amazing things to the community that I'm really proud of and can share with you. Absolutely. So, how are things going at Parks and Rec? Things are things are great. This time of year is um, is so good for us. Um, we're always busy at something, but this year uh, we're especially busy as spring sports getting ready to start mm -hmm. off. Our maintenance crew is busy. Um, grass is, you know, spring is getting ready to pop. Grass is getting ready to grow. Uh, people are going to be out there. We'll be cleaning everything from cleaning bathrooms and collecting trash to working on trails and everything else. So yeah, it's, it's busy this time of year. It's Absolutely. good. Absolutely. I know a couple weekends ago when it was nice on a Sunday afternoon, uh, my yeah. wife Avery and I went out to Wade Park. I don't know, I was expecting two or three cars there. Uh, I was wrong on that. You know, parking lot was almost half full. People out walking, enjoying the playground. Uh, even some people dipping their toes in the Pig River, which mm. it may still be a little cold for that, uh, for my liking. But <laughs> yeah. just people everywhere just enjoying. And that's just one of the park offerings that you have here in Franklin County. Yeah. So people are already out and enjoying it. And as you said, uh, the grass grows every year. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the park crews do a great job, uh, always mm. pristine conditions. Yeah. Uh, and I know sometimes that can be a little difficult. Uh, yeah. And Mother Nature really... Uh, through a curveball last year uh, with a couple of the heavy rain events that we had that have, have taken a lot of attention and time to get uh, things back in line at a couple of the parks. Yeah, yeah, Hurricanes uh, Florence and then Hurricane Michael hit us pretty good, but um, for the most part we've done most major repairs. We still have a few athletic fields that were needing a repair, but we're about 95% complete on those repairs, so by this fall everything should be back, 100% back to normal. Absolutely. Well, what would you like to talk about this morning? I know you've got a lot of stuff prepared for us. And Yeah, I wanted to um, just take some time and kind of, uh, most people when they think about parks and recreation, they just think, oh, there's just parks and there's just recreation and and that's about it but we offer a number of, um, of activities just kind of want to give um, folks um, viewers kind of a more of a, uh, a view of, um, of our programs and um, share with you all some numbers this morning so. absolutely I think if Jamie can pull up our, our presentation uh, off of the laptop we'll, we'll kind of get started and look through some of these uh, different things okay very good um, yeah, so really we have uh, four different business areas within Parks and Recreation. Of course, we have, like we were just speaking about earlier, we have parks and the maintenance. We have athletics. Um, we offer some adult, adult athletics, but we offer a number of youth athletics. We offer uh, aging services and, uh, and community recreation. Mm -hmm. That's um, sort of a new uh, thing that we've combined here uh, relatively recently. Um, and outdoor recreation, that's our newest um, different um, business area. And after we kind of go through those, I was going to share some recent successes, some things that we're really proud of. And then um, we have some new initiatives, things on the horizon I want to get folks aware of and, um, and, and looking forward to seeing. So um, as far as parks and recreation goes, um, we have parks, everything from the Smell Lake Community Park Beach, there's Wade Park, uh, we have a number of picnic shelters, mm -hmm. and um, there's the newly renovated Lark Field as well. So we have places um, really spread throughout the county, but um, really our goal with parks and recreation is you know, we really want to provide that safe and welcoming space for people to recreate. And it's funny, I always talk about parks and recreation. Uh, our, our park maintenance staff is like, really they're doing the best job when no one notices that they're there, when everything is great and people, um, things are clean and, 
and things are going smooth. So really, we're, they're really their goal is to have efficient park maintenance that offers the best facilities in the region. And I think, I think they do a good job Absolutely. of doing that. Absolutely. And if you look at those pictures there, not only are they great pictures, well, that is an accurate representation of these parks. You didn't manicure them up and then take the picture. You know, that, that's how they look on a daily basis, uh, whether it's an athletic field, always in pristine condition, or the Smith Mountain Lake Park. But as you said, you hardly ever see anybody there mowing the grass or it it's always seems like it's done as you said under the cover of night we know it's not but yeah you know you, you don't you're not bothered by it you're not but it's always just so beautiful and well maintenanced and taken care of yeah we want we want folks to go there and enjoy um spend time with their family and friends and relax and having fun and and um and not you know not worry about the unsightly things right. or things like that so Absolutely. um yeah so we offer nine we have a number of other sites but nine truly parks um, throughout the county, but we maintain over a thousand acres of, of park property, which is a lot. Um, last year, for instance, we offered 359 shelter rentals. That's everything from um, birthday parties to family reunions, um, church functions, um, tons of different things. Um, we prepared 15 different athletic fields for over 849 games. That's a lot of line and fields, especially baseball. That's a lot of drag in and marking lines. Um, and this is the number always, we keep track of our, our equipment usage hours, 2,571 hours of, and those are just things that have hour meters. Um, of, that's a lot of time spent um, bouncing around on a zero turn mower and everything else to keep the things looking sharp. So we have a, we have a great crew that, that keeps those um, parks looking good. Um, the next one is, uh, is athletics, especially I guess we're going to focus on youth athletics. And of course, their, our goal is really provide a positive environment for young athletes to learn skills that will assist in becoming successful and productive citizens. Was, um, and I've got two, um, two young athletes in my family. I have two boys. And um, as much as I think it'd be great if they're a professional athlete, we're really our goal is not to create professional athletes, it's to make you know, great citizens. And you know, we really want a high number of kids in our community participating in high quality. You know, it is. It, Athletics are made to be competitive. We want to, you know, the goal is to go out there and win, but we want to make this a nurturing environment for kids to grow and learn those skills. Um, we offer a number of sports that a lot of communities our size don't offer. We offer 14 different team sports. Um, that was 294 different teams last year. That's a lot of coaches and sponsors and team moms and everything else. Um, yeah, 294 different teams. The average cost is always something I like to share with our, our fee to participate in a, in a sport is, is $15 uh, per season. That's a fairly new thing that we're doing. Um, and, but our average cost, just direct cost, is $18.71, which is very reasonable. We try to keep costs low. So folks are really getting, those are just direct costs. doesn't include maintenance time or anything. That's just for officials and um, uh, maybe some equipment, those kind of things. And so, um, but the average cost anywhere from, uh, from um, zero to $32.49. So folks work, feel pretty good people getting their money's worth. Yeah. And um, last year we had 3,751 kids participate in athletics. And if you put this in perspective, that's 7% of the population. That's just those kids playing. That's not their siblings, mom and dad, grandma and granddaddy, uncles and aunts. So you could probably, with those numbers, that's probably 20, 25% of Frank County are involved some way in, in athletics. So, um, and as you said, a lot of people when they think of parks and rec, mm -hmm. those are the two things that you've mentioned already. That's what you think of. You think of these facilities. I can go out on a nature trail. I can ride my mountain bike. I can go fishing. I can do any number of things at these parks. And then youth sports. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what parks and recreation globally was for a very long time. Maintain my right. parks, give my kids, grandkids, neighbors' kids a place to, to play and, and have organized sports. And that was about it. Yeah. And a lot of people, I think, still believe that that is a majority of the time that you guys do. Yeah. Um, and you spend a lot of time doing those. <laughs> but there's also a lot of other things, as you've said, mm -hmm. that Parks and Rec offers in Franklin County that sometimes uh, may go unnoticed except for that core group of people who really enjoy those offerings. You're exactly right, Kevin. Yeah, that's exactly the case. Yeah, we offer so many different things that, um, that people might not be aware of. Um, and actually, we'll, we'll be able to get over that here in just a second. I've got a few more things in adult athletics and we can kind of touch base on these other things. Um, 
our athletic program is we really try to focus on on sportsmanship and that whole developing of um, these young athletes. And um, oh, actually, let me let me jump back here on a slide. So um, here, here's just a pie chart on on attendance based on different um, school districts. And you'll notice this pie chart is it's pretty evenly distributed. There's no necessarily pie that piece of that pie that stands out more than the other ones. Youth athletics is so good because it does. It reaches um, our community the most broadly. It's so, it reaches kids, uh, you know, evenly pretty much throughout our county, which is, is, uh, is a difficult thing to do, it, but it does a good job. But, um, but back to the, what we've been doing here about developing young athletes is about um, doing some sportsmanship awards, recognizing um, those skills about not only just being the top athlete, but being a, a good sportsman, being a, a person that's as good at um, losing as they are at winning. It's never fun about losing, but being you know um, good on the on the court. Um, and so what we've been doing is uh, recognizing players that are you know good on being a team on, on a team. And these are just some pictures from those kids that are um, have been great team members from this past winter's basketball season. And I just love these. Just tons of smiling faces and um, good players on the court. Um, and probably some great athletes, good on the court, but also just good team members. Um, this last in particular, I've just have a great statement from him. That this this young man in the green shirt, his name is Trey, and um, he uh, plays the um, for Rocky Mount, and he plays on uh, Brock Anderson's team. And um, his coach, uh, Coach Anderson, says that this kid has a special gift for leading and supporting his team. Anytime the clock is stopped, he'd huddle up the team to give them a pep talk. He's always positive and giving high fives to his teammates and congratulate them on a good play and quick to reassure them after making a mistake. This kid has a big future, not only in basketball, but also in life. Great job, Trey. So that's exactly what we're trying to do is make kids that are learning those great skills about being a good part of the team and you know, building up his, his, member, his teammates. Um, we've also been doing this actually not only just for um, for players, but also for our, um, for coaches, for those coaches that um, are showing those great traits that we're looking for. And we always do this by, you know, we have parents that call in rave about their, their coaches. And so um, we always pick a coach of the season to recognize. And so the coach of the season is, um, is uh, his name is Donald Messenger, and just a super guy. I know this, I know, um, know myself, and uh, just a super guy, and Donald has been coaching now for six years and doing three different, um, three different um, sports, and um, and gosh, he has so many good stories and that kind of thing. When and talking to him, but I like this most about him. So, what's your favorite thing about coaching basketball? And he says, honestly, just enjoy working with the kids. It's great to see them progress during the season and to see how much they've improved. Plus, it's pretty fun getting fist bumps from your players when you see them around town. <laughs> and he is. He's, he's such a great guy that's so encouraging, that nurturing environment. But he definitely teaches some great skills. Mm -hmm. um, but it is. There's, I know a lot of coaches love, you know, they bump into a player at like the Kroger and, you know, seeing them out and about. It's, it's always a good thing. And as you said there, you're not trying necessarily to build the next NBA star, but you're trying to build that good citizen to, to operate here in Franklin County. It's the same way with these coaches. Uh, most of these coaches aren't going to be your next uh, coach in the NBA or at the collegiate level, but they're folks who know the game and are able to, to teach it to these young kids and do such a great job. Uh, you see all the smiling faces with the, the kids and the, the Sportsmanship Award. Uh, you know that something something right's happening. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's always some disappointment in losing and some uh, joy in, in victory, but as you said, just having that ability for kids to be kids, have that opportunity to get out and enjoy these sports, and just great role models from these coaches. Yeah, athletics is such a great way to teach those lessons because it's never fun to lose, but that's part of life, and you have to embrace, you know, learn to embrace those things and move on. And and winning is, you know, it's, it's always good that's too. Right. But you need to win with style and class. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so like what you mentioned earlier about some things that folks might not know about is um, aging services and our community recreation. And Marsha Cramblett oversees um, these programs. And we've talked a, a, a number of times about um, aging services, but still, we're still getting the word out about mm -hmm. aging services. Yes, absolutely. Um, and most, I love a couple of these photos, mostly like 
The big thing right now, the big hot thing is is pickleball with um, Aging Services Community Recreation. Go over there all the time. And I like this picture. This is uh, uh, Linda Handy. She's a super person. Um, and you see she's, she's smiling, having a great time. But you know, pickleball is also serious. I don't know if you can see all these people's faces, but people are very focused and serious um, about pickleball. And that's a, one, of the, a, one of the, just a great example of some of the many things we have going on. Um, but Aging Services, really we're trying to meet the changing needs of the community. We're trying to provide activities that citizens, um, to keep citizens active, connected, and informed. And I really do that, we're trying to do that by uh, offering a wider range of public, you know, getting, getting a wider range of the public involved in participating in activities to keep them mentally and physically healthy. Um, and we do this everything from, oh gosh, this is Norma. She's, uh, she teaches yoga classes. Um, we have a number of things like yoga classes um, and uh, at the Essex Center that people just, that love, uh, fill up quickly. Um, we've done a number of programs there like the Soup for Seniors. Yes. I think we've talked about that, big hit. Um, that's we collected over 5,000 cans of, um, of food to distribute to seniors and we were able to provide 250 bags um, and they went all across to seniors that just needed those uh, meals at home and um, it was it was a big hit and these were really well done high quality food that people really appreciated and um, Marsha and Flo um, and, and Zach worked hard They're, Folks probably know them from the Essex Center. They worked hard and worked with everything from Henry Elementary to the Benjamin Franklin Middle School Junior Honor Society and even Windy Gap and a number of other places to collect all these food um, items. Um, we offer a number of programs, not only just at the Essex Center, but we offer trips and hikes that are very popular. And um, But the Essex Center is, I mentioned, Marsha and Flo and Zach, they're always there. Um, and are, it's just a great place. There's always some activities going on with aging services. Um, a huge um, wide list of activities to keep people engaged. So that encourage folks that are interested in those activities to check them out. Absolutely. And you know, from firsthand experience, uh, participating in some of the, the bingo events they had over yeah. the winter that are always highly successful is seeing people come into the Essex Center who, for whatever reason, have never been in the facility yeah. and thinking, okay, wh what is, you can tell they have this look, okay, what is this place? Why, why have I never been here? What do you guys do? And you'll hear that the staff there saying, oh, well, on these days we have these activities and we have these classes, and they'll take and show them around to the different dance studios and gym and the, the big uh, areas that you have. So, it's, again, it's yeah. getting that word out for people yeah. to know that this is here for you to participate in, here for you to enjoy. Uh, and that's what it requires. They can have all the programs that they want. They can offer all the classes. If the community doesn't get out and participate, then uh, it, it makes it a little difficult to, to be successful. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, and I, I think you, you hit it right on is that if you go to the Essex Center just one time, you're going to go again. <laughs> There's so many um, neat activities there and such great staff, such a great facility. Yes. It, it's, it's a home run <laughs> for sure. Um, another program area, this is fairly new, we've been offering this program area for maybe two, two and a half years now, um, is outdoor recreation. And um, just like in that photo, this is, you know, wouldn't you want to be there? It's just a, um, and their, their goal is to really provide recreational activities for, for people that live here right now, but also provide activities to help us attract those new residents and those new businesses that want to come here. Really trying to not only provide a great things for us residents that live here already, but really sell Franklin County. So like that photo, I'd like to be there. If I had never been there, like, oh, let's, I'd like to join that. Looks like some great people. And those are some folks out um, doing a sea kayak or a kayaking program out on Philpot Lake. Um, but really, outdoor recreation, they're trying to offer unique services that showcase Franklin County as a great place to live. And, um, and I've got a number of just successes, especially in the outdoor recreation um, field to um, share with you guys that are, um, I think will show just that, the things that not only are, are great fun for us to participate in as you know, residents of Frank County, but really show why others, why this is such a great place to live. Um, we offered this great program this past summer and we'll be offering again this upcoming um, summer is this thing called Concerts by Canoe. And it was a huge hit, it was offered um, we the Army Corps of Engineers and the Harvester, and we offer this at um, um, down on Philpot Lake. And it was essentially, talk about unique, it was definitely unique. It was, um, the stage was a floating stage out in the middle of the cove, and if you, to, the musicians are faced to the water, so 
you had to bring your kayak or canoe. Actually, we had a number of, of canoes and, and tubes and that kind of thing. If you didn't have one that you could walk them to borrow, but people brought their kayaks and stand up paddle boards, canoes, and just packed that little cove. And just, it was a great evening. The water was perfect. The weather was perfect. The band was perfect. People had just a great time. And gosh, don't you just want to join those folks <laughs> and uh, hang out in the water and, you know, just combines everything that makes Frank County so great. Good music, great natural resources, you know, good people. It was a good evening. <laughs> yeah, it was a great evening. And it's such a unique idea, too. Um, yeah. You know, and your position is, is kind of as the head of the department. I know that you hear lots of ideas come across your desk. And, you know, what do you, how do you, I don't, I don't know how to exactly word the question, but mm -hmm. you hear this idea, okay, we want to have a concert. Mm -hmm. okay, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. We want to do it on the water where people can have, you know, their boats and kayaks and canoes. And at the same time, we want to have the band on a floating dock. Yeah. That sounds like a crazy idea it, yeah. when you think about it, but how well it works when you put it in into play of, of convincing people. How, how difficult is it before we kind of continue on oh, to convince yeah. people, you know, you want to come to this concert, but you also want to bring out, you know, your, your flotation device and your canoe and your kayak or your tube. You know, what, what interesting ways are, are you able to do that? Or is it just people are just so accepting of it here in Franklin County? Yeah, I think people were like, this one was very well attended. Um, I think people jumped all over it. And I think the, uh, there's people that, um, it's like anything, uh, there's people that did go, heard of, you know, told their friends. And so we've had a lot of people that are itching and already been asking about the one we're doing this upcoming summer. And so, yeah, so stay tuned. We'll be having the, the, the new playbook coming out here soon yes. and we'll have dates and everything like that in there. So this is a little bit of a teaser for that. So, um, yeah, of course, I'm always worried about um, the not so fun stuff like, you know, <laughs> you know, risk management and worry about that. So we do all the boring stuff behind the scenes. So we have Gamelin Fisheries there and the police or the sheriff's department there, everything like that to make make sure it's a safe environment sure. for folks. But um, yeah, people uh, people love this kind of thing. It's sure. it's um it's it's a very it's a great big hit. Um, another neat one that we did here recently that was um, just a big hit just last month was we hosted the International uh, Paddling Film Festival, and um, we did that at uh, at Chaos Mountain. Um, it's a brewery over um, in the Callaway area, as most folks know. And um, this Paddling Film Festival sh highlighted all these world-class films from that were entered in from around the world. And so it was really great because it what it did was. Um, it really kind of builds that culture because we have, you know, we have all these great rivers here in Frank County. We have these two great lakes. There's this great paddling culture, like we have the Ramble Weekend, um, all these great things that to do. And so this is, we have all these people that are that are following paddling. So this really to help, help build that culture and celebrate paddling, especially in these cold winter months when people are kind of itching to get out on the water. So huge turnout, and you know, I'll this picture. There's Matt. We had some great, um, you know, coverage of getting the word out. And so, um, yeah, that was a, a good one of, of uh, the International Paddling Film Festival. Um, one, another one that we've been doing for a couple years now, talking about paddling, is um, we've offered this for two summers, and we'll be doing it again this upcoming summer, is um, tubing at Wade Park. This is a very, you know, family-friendly, very safe activity to do with a, you know, that just about anybody can participate in. Um, and um, yeah, people at Wade Park, it's, you can rent a tube for $2 for an hour or $5 for the day. You can't beat that. Um, well, they're right there. Um, no worrying about hauling equipment around or shuttles. It's, uh, the, the float is, is a short walk, so you can walk between the two very easily. And gosh, and the water's just right. People have a great time. Very, tons of kids love this thing. It's, you know, the water there is only about knee to waist deep generally speaking so while kids should be wearing a life jacket it's mostly you know a very safe experience for them to do and I mean beautiful waterfalls it's just such a great um, experience to have and yeah gosh I'm, I'm itching for that time of year to get on the water get <laughs> myself <laughs> um, so um, so some upcoming initiatives that we have coming up Kevin are um, a lot of people have been seeing the construction on over at uh, Summit View at uh, the new um, business park. There'll be a recreational area um, going in um, right there at the intersection, right behind Virginia Furniture Market. And um, 
uh, right there in the intersection of Pleasant Breeze and Brick Church Road. Mm -hmm. And um, this, this is some images of what the entire complex would be when it's completely built out. And there's some conceptuals and things always, of course, they always <laughs> change over time. Um, but right now there's some equipment over there working right now to build that, um, this entrance road and, uh, and the pavilion. So it'll be done, um, everything should be done about late summer if the weather holds out. And we've already, um, we'll be um, opening up a walking track that's newly completed. We've been working with the Rotary Club of, um, of Rocky Mount to do that. So that's gonna be another great addition. That's, this walking trail is exactly a half a mile long and um, has some spectacular views. I don't know, I think it's gonna, I think it's safe to say it's all the best views of on a walking trail in Franklin County. And um, yeah, it's, it's gonna be spectacular. It'll be, it'll be a big hit. We've had a number of people itching about that one. So <laughs> um, I guess the last big initiative to kind of talk about is, um, is cycling. Um, and this is one of those things that our, we're part of a tourism um, a group, um, Virginia, Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge, um, that covers Frank County and uh, Roanoke, um, Salem, Botetourt, and one of the big pushes that um, that they're doing now is is cycling, and they say that that's our big strength that we need to be doing. And I think that's I think they're right on the money. We have um, some great natural um, areas. We also have some great backcountry roads for road cycling, um, but definitely some areas that um, you know we can you know we're just barely scratching the surface on that. But um, for instance, this is the top images is of Jamison Mill. We have some great mountain biking trails there. Um, Matt Ross, our outdoor recreation manager, has been doing some great biking programs, even with the libraries, um, doing some strider bike classes for the little ones, and um, road cycling. So we have some really some neat things coming up with biking. Biking is the big thing. So like I mentioned, we have the VBR Ride Center designation. We're doing balancing bike programs. We're doing a bike rodeo for promote bike safety with um, the sheriff's department. Um, we're gra people riding their bikes on gravel roads is, is a really popular thing right now. Uh, people are looking for um, you know get back and explore these backcountry roads. And Frank County, we have a number of gravel <laughs> roads, and so um, uh, Matt Ross has developed these three gravel routes that we'll be promoting to get folks out there. And when they visit Frank County, they can pack their bike and explore these different routes. And we make a number of trail improvements. We're in the process of doing that right now um, to Wade Park. Um, and plus we're doing those trails I just mentioned at Summit View. So yeah, biking is a big thing that, um, that we're trying to promote here for Frank County. That's a big thing we can use to help sell. Frank County is a great place to, to, to visit, explore, um, and hopefully encourage people to move and move here, move their business here. So. Absolutely, you know, it comes back to that quality of life. And parks and recreation is such a huge part of that quality of life for getting individuals to move and relocate here, for people to visit here, uh, and for businesses to locate here. You know, a lot of uh, the success of the Summit View Business Park is going to hinge on that quality of life that we offer here in Franklin County. So we said you guys are a huge part of that, uh, yeah. one of the, the, the biggest uh, influencers of that here in Franklin County. And as we kind of uh, look to, to wrap up uh, your presentation, uh, one of the last things we were talking about is get the word out and how important it is about getting the word out about events, about classes, and getting people in Franklin County participating in these events. Um, when you look at some of the events that are coming up, the Pig River Ramble, always wildly attended, highly successful. Uh, the Egg Hunt, another event that's oh, going to yeah. be coming up more kids than you will see anywhere at any time <laughs> yeah. throughout the rest of the year. But there's also other events that happen throughout the year that are equally as good, but people just maybe haven't latched onto it yet or, or don't even know about it. So what are some of the ways that you guys get the word out about all the great things that you guys have going on? Well, gosh, uh, one of the great ways <laughs> we get the word out is through Rise and Shine sure. and everything you guys do here. So we really appreciate, mm -hmm. you know, the time. Uh, I, I just have to feel like I have to say that right off the bat. Yeah, thanks so much for no helping problem. us get the word out. This yeah. is such a, a good thing for us because um, you guys are so great about mm -hmm. helping us do that and, and champions of what's going on here in the, in the community. Um, but in addition to um, Cable 12 and, um, and things we do with you guys. We also offer like the playbook. That's yes. probably our biggest thing. We offer that three times a year. We'll have a new edition come out here in May. Just so you'll see that all throughout the community here shortly. Um, that's just done, it's done three times a year. And uh, it's, it's gonna be another every time. Uh, Marsha Cramblett, she's, that's <laughs> her big thing. And, 
every time she gets a new playbook out, like, this one can't be better. Well, I think this even this <laughs> upcoming one will be even better than the last, which I didn't ever think that was possible. Um, our website, our website is a yes. great way to get um, to get information. Um, Zach Brooks keeps that updated, and it's a great way to um, find out what's going on. That's constantly um, evolving and being updated with what's going on. And um, we have, like last year, we had t over 28,000 people, individuals, unique individuals, visit our website to get information from schedules, upcoming programs, to events, to park information. It's all on there. So um, yeah, our website's really well done. So I encourage folks to look at that. And that's, I should guess I should give the website address. It's, uh, it's playfranklincounty.com. Yeah, you see it right there on your screen. And another great thing about the website is you can get registered for those classes and athletic events and uh, different other things going on. You can do your shelter reservations. Uh, you can take care of it all right there on your website. We really work hard to keep it as uh, user friendly as possible. It, it's pretty, it's pretty well done. If anybody sees any suggestions, like to see improvements or something we're missing, we're always, um, we're, we'd be glad to hear from those. But yes, I think it's very user friendly to help folks get engaged with, um, with and get active with our with our programs and activities. Um, you know, social media. That's just a thing these days. It's um, where we have active accounts on Facebook and and Twitter and. Um, and Snapchat and all those different things. So, so check us out there. Um, and so, th those are probably our major way mm -hmm. of getting out. You all see a number of things like you'll see a number of banners going up in the community about the Ramble Weekend coming up soon. Um, and we do a number of grassroots things as well. So, um, yeah. So get, we need to get the word out. So, yeah, we, we appreciate you guys for helping us do just that. And I do have to say that I'm a little bit disappointed in our Cable 12 viewers, especially those who are watching us live on Facebook right now. When we were uh, talking with Parks and Rec last month, they were so close to 5,000 oh. followers, and I wanted you guys to push them over the edge. Well, they're even closer this month. They're within a couple of followers of hitting uh, that uh, milestone goal there. So you guys better make it happen this week. I'm going to put that challenge out there. You fell a little bit short last month, so if you're watching us on Facebook Live, as soon as we finish up this interview, go over to Franklin County Parks and Recreation, like that Facebook page, and help push them over that 5,000 person uh, goal that they have uh, set. And then yeah, once they get over 5,000, then we'll work towards 10,000. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are right there at it. We are just a couple away. So yes, we would, we would appreciate that. Um, and I guess, uh, yeah, I think it's really, um, I'm really proud of the things that our small department does. And we're you know, pretty small as far as departments go. Um, and I say, almost say that as a sense of pride that you know, we're generally about a third of the size of communities our size um, as far as departments goes. But um, I think yeah, I would stack us up against most any place else. I think it's because we have such good staff, such a good community, so many folks that, and it's not just um, folks that are um, you know, staff members, it's really those volunteers that um, make us what we are. Um, so I'd really encourage anybody out there that's looking to get engaged. Um, yeah, definitely sign up for a program, mm -hmm. reserve a shelter, um, sign up, you know, attend, come to one of our events, but also if you want to volunteer, that's a great way, especially being a coach is, I think it's one of those really wonderful things that you can um, have a memorable experience, a lifelong memorable experience with a child. I know I remember my coaches and I, I had some great experiences um, in my youth athletics um, is that when I was a kid. Um, we have over 600 volunteers that are coaches right now, and um, and that we just done some basic math, and that's over $800,000 in value to our community. So um, a huge benefit, and um, we just really appreciate all those folks that spend hours and time and energy to to make it happen. So yeah, always uh, if you want to be a part of the team, we we. We'd love to have you, and you can contact us at our website mm -hmm. or on through social media, and we'd, we're glad to get in contact with you to help you plug you in. So, and if you're thinking about being a coach or being an official uh, for one of the athletic seasons, and you're thinking, you know, I, I don't know if I have all of the tools, or I don't know if I'm qualified to do it, uh, you guys just don't leave them hanging. You offer so many resources, especially on the officiating side, to make mm -hmm. sure that uh, maybe it's a, a young person who's played the sport and they want to, you know, uh, get into to officiating. You guys really help them out and the skills that they need for that so uh, again another way that you, you make the the wheels turn yes yes we, yeah we have opportunities from people that are may have been coaching for years and years and know every play and and and, and are and have been doing it for a while and very experienced but we have somebody that may have be a little bit rusty at that haven't hadn't played for a few years and maybe has never even played before and yeah we, we can get you we can get them up to speed uh, pretty quickly 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, as we, we kind of, uh, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't again hit some of those events that are coming up. Easter egg hunt coming up on April the 20th. That's right. I think it's going to start at 2 o'clock. That's correct. Very uh, good. And it literally will start at 2 o'clock. If you're there at 2 o'clock and you're registering, it's going to be a tough time for your, your young folks to find any eggs. They will go quickly. Very quickly, uh, yes. They, they disappear. In it. So get there a little bit early. Get registered. Uh, be sure to stick around afterwards for all the great things they've got going on there. And Ramble Weekend. We know everybody in Franklin County and beyond is itching for Ramble Weekend after last year. Uh, Mother Nature uh, wrecking havoc on at least the first two days. Yeah. Uh, so I know everybody's ready to, to get to Ramble Weekend kicked off. That's coming up May 17th, 18th, and 19th. That's correct, yeah. Uh, what about some other events that, that we may be <laughs> leaving out? I know those are the two major ones coming up. Uh, is there anything in the next month or so that... Um, we'll have a, um, and I'll have to get the date here, um, maybe we can add that on here in a little bit. We have a, um, a kids fishing derby at the... At yes. the um, I believe that's the 13th of April. I, I believe I you're so. right. Good. Thank you, Kevin. I'm glad you know that date. I, I should have... How did I forget that, that one? Yeah. Yeah. And um, that's, a, that's a really good one. We partner with the Department of Gambling Fisheries mm -hmm. to do that. And this is um, held at the recreational park. There's this little pond at the back of the park mm -hmm. called Woody Lake. And they stock that thing full of trout. It's a great way. It's, it's a youth-only mm -hmm. fishing waters. Um, it's, it's actually open now for youth, but we'll have a, have a big event on the 13th. And um, it's a lot of fun. Yes. And um, it's a great way to introduce kids to fishing because um, you want them to have, you know, have a good chance of being mm -hmm. successful catching fish. And so it, this, it's, very, it's a great time. Kids have a, have a wonderful time down there. Absolutely. You know, if you saw here on Cable 12 on our social media, right here on uh, your neighborhood network, there was a, a Cops and Bobbers fishing rodeo a, mm. uh, over the past weekend uh, there with the, the town of Rocky Mountain, their, their police department. So all of you kids that went out and had a great time at that event, you're going to have another opportunity coming up in April. And if you missed that opportunity, uh, you're going to have an opportunity, as we said, I think that's April 13th. I think it's going to begin at 10 uh, to maybe 10 to 2. But like you said, it's a great facility. Uh, yeah. Another hidden gem almost uh, that uh, is right there at Parks and Rec. Like you said, on the back of, of the facility. But lots lots of things coming up. We could sit here all day yeah. and tell you about the great things. PlayFranklinCounty.com mm -hmm. or uh, get your hands on one of the playbooks. If you don't have one of the playbooks, once you go to the website, you can scroll down. They have a digital version mm -hmm. uh, on the website that you can click on. Just lots of ways to get informed. Follow them on their social medias. I don't know if there's any more that we can say here on this Wednesday morning. Yeah. We, we, first and foremost, we appreciate all that you guys do uh, uh, behind the scenes and getting these great events, uh, and especially allowing us to come out and enjoy them and to, to share them with our Cable 12 audience. We know that that folks love to see it. I had somebody yesterday uh, ask when the Pig River Ramble was, not because they necessarily wanted to participate, they were a little bit advanced in age, but uh -huh. they love watching folks go over the uh -huh. ledge and the blackout. They just love seeing these great events uh, going yeah. on in Franklin County. Yeah, it is. It's, there's a lot of community pride in some of these events, absolutely. absolutely. That's excellent. Well, thank you again for joining us here. And We'll look forward to our conversation next month with another member of your great staff. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, thanks so much for the continued support. We really do appreciate it. It's um, a lot that we wouldn't have the success we have without you guys. So, yeah, thank you guys. Well, we appreciate it.